Good afternoon and welcome to Yorkshire Voice on Monday the 15th of May. I'm Sean Gannon. And I'm Alex Miller. Here are some of the stories that matter in Yorkshire today. A conference tackling the drug menace in Leeds. We sample some delicious food and drink at a junk food cafe. And thousands gathered on the streets of Leeds supporting friends and family running the half marathon. But first, more than 3,000 people lost their lives from drug poisoning in 2015. It's a truly shocking figure, but what can be done about it? Well, Leeds Welcome Mortality Matters today, a one-day national conference addressing the rising rates of drug-related deaths. Our reporter Sam Brooksbank was there. Fatal drug overdoses are on the rise and kill two and a half times more people in the UK per year than road traffic accidents. Mortality Matters is a national conference that examines the issues around the increase in drug-related deaths across the UK. Tim, a former addict, shared his experience of just how bad it was for him. I had a heroin addiction for 28 years um, and I, I took drugs every day for 28 years um, and it self-destroyed me, destroyed my entire life, my family relationships, my career. Um, my career started when I was 42, so I will never achieve some of the things perhaps I could have achieved. Um, it destroyed my marriage, it didn't do my physical health a lot of good, it certainly didn't do my mental health any good. And my mental health would be up and down for the rest of my life because of that. Um, addiction is a destructive process, full stop. The event, set up by Adaction, is one of the largest specialist drug, alcohol and mental health treatment charities in the UK. Health and medical professionals met up in Leeds to discuss what can be done to aid the epidemic. We've seen rapid rises in the last three years. We've got the highest level of drug-related death we've ever had in this country. So it's really important that people who are working in this sector get together and work out how we're going to solve this problem. It feels like a really difficult subject to talk about people dying at the, at the best of times. So that's a really hard thing to talk about. But talking about people dying when they are long-standing drug users often and have been living very chaotic and difficult lives for many years makes it all the more difficult to talk about. One of the main topics of discussion was if people who are arrested for drug taking, they be given help through medical intervention instead of incarceration or other forms of punishment. With the majority of the speakers agreeing that incarceration is not the way forward. 95% of those in prison for two years or less are there for drug related offences. 95% of them will be back in prison within two years or less. What are we doing? There will always be drugs in prisons while there are people in prisons who want to use them. The way to deal with that is to provide more effective interventions for those people who have problems with drug use. We would really, really urge the government to look at drug and alcohol use as a health issue first and foremost. Tim also admitted that help was much easier to get back then than it is now. It was better. I was very lucky. I went into treatment in 2004. There was a lot more money in the system. A lot of the services I accessed are no longer available. Open access drop-ins, free counselling, aftercare, occupational therapists, dual diagnosis workers. I had all of those. Um, I mean, I come from West London, which is a wealthy part of the country, but you'd struggle to get that now. Talking about the problem is only the first step, and everyone is in agreement that more events like this are needed more often, and more can be done to help those suffering with addiction. Sam Brooksbank for Yorkshire Voice. Detectives have launched a murder investigation following the discovery of a body in Leeds. Police were called to the woods near Old Woodley Crags Car Park in Stairfoot Lane, where the body of a 26-year-old woman had been found by people out running. A 26-year-old man from Leeds has been arrested on suspicion of murder. Meanwhile, the two main hospitals in Leeds, the Leeds General Infirmary and St James, say they weren't affected by the cyber attack that's crashed the NHS computer systems across the country. Operations and appointments are being cancelled around the UK because of the disruption. Alex, have you heard of the Junk Food Cafe? The Junk Food Cafe? I can't say I have, Sean. What's it all about? It's a pay-as-you-feel cafe that has been operating in Horsford today. It's part of the Real Junk Food Project, which aims to reduce food waste and provide affordable food for those who need it. The Horsford branch is open on most Mondays at St Margaret's Parish Centre, and we sent our reporter Jack Goodman to find out what it's all about. The Real Junk Food Cafe in Horsford is an extension of the Leeds-based Real Junk Food Project aiming to reduce food waste in the area. It's held at St Margaret's Parish Centre and encourages everyone and anyone to plate up and get involved. 
Most Mondays we, we run a cafe between 10 and 2 um, and it's for everybody. Um, we have young families, we have elderly people, young people. Um, our motto is feed bellies not bins. So um, um, some people um, they can either pay by doing the washing up or pay by donations. It's everything pay as you feel. Um, so we have uh, donations for the food and then we have surplus food that we don't cook with that we put out and people can help themselves to as well. I decided to have some lunch at the cafe with a colleague to see how donated food is transformed into a fresh menu every week. Well, I'll try it. <laughs> Looks good. It's really nice. Yep. We've both opted for the uh, Mediterranean vegetable pizza down here at the Junk Food Cafe. It's just one of a number of different dishes that they provide virtually every Monday for everyone who comes down. It's a pay as you feel and it's just an example of how this food is being saved and used rather than wasted. Let's eat some more. Yep. But the cafe isn't just about preventing food waste and providing low cost meals. It also splits the funds raised to support different community groups in and around the area. We're in a very fortunate position because all the food is donated free, all the, everyone's time is the volunteers, um, so a, a small amount of the money each week goes to the, to the church for their expenses, um, but the rest of it is surplus for the community, so um, we've already given um, £500 to the food bank. Um, we're going to give a similar amount to the Children's Centre uh, and then any other organisation. So next year, Walk of Art is starting up again and going to look for funding. Any other organisations. Uh, we make a certain about £100 every week we run. Um, so that's another way that we can contribute to the community. There are less than four weeks until the general election and we've been speaking to members of all the main parties here on Yorkshire Voice. Today is the turn of the Lib Dems and their candidate, Alan Nixon. Thank you for joining us. It's a pleasure. So, Alan, is decriminalising the use of cannabis really the answer to the UK's drug problem? I'm not sure it's the only, uh, only, the only answer. Um, I have to perhaps suggest that the real reason the Liberal Democrats have come out with this policy is that we're cracking down on crime. We're not encouraging the taking of cannabis, and I suspect, um, rightly or wrongly, the taking of cannabis will continue anyway, <laughs> whether it's criminalised or not. What we're trying to do is stamp hard on the gangs who are making a lot of money out of this. We're trying to crack down on the associated crime that goes with the taking of cannabis. Okay. The Liberal Democrats have said that they want to build 300,000 homes yes. uh, in you know, a year for the next few years. How will you square that with local opposition to house building in general? I think you've got to have a fair balance by all means, but again, the reason we've suggested it is that there is a desperate need for housing um, in many parts of the country. We're very keen on building houses in brown, so-called brownfield sites rather than greenfield. I accept sometimes greenfield sites have to happen, but we want to concentrate on um, use previous industrial sites and brownfield sites where there's plenty of room, at least plenty of potential room to build housing. Uh, Alan, yes. the NHS is a major issue at the moment, what with all the cuts uh, that the Tories are proposing, Labour proposing putting billions into it, and now the cyber attack. Yes. What do the Lib Dems propose to do with the service? We have the advantage of an, a marvellous expert on the health service called Norman Lamb, who was a former shadow health minister, and he has proposed, and we all heartily agree, that there should be £6 billion pumped into the NHS at fairly short order. How are you going to pay that is your next question. And the answer is that we are suggesting that there should be a penny added on to everyone's tax rate. So if you pay 20, uh, 20 pence in the pound at the moment, make that 21. If you pay 40, make it 40, etc., etc. That extra penny will raise six billion pounds. Now, it's very easy to say, oh, well, it'll disappear and no one knows quite where it'll go. But on your weekly pay statement or your monthly salary statement, that particular extra penny will be itemized and ring fenced so that, in, for example, it might be four pounds 37 one week and so on. And that will be precisely labeled as being NHS 
and social care tax. It won't go anywhere else, it's ring-fenced. And although many parties don't like talking about increasing tax, I think the average man or woman in the street would say to you, if it's only a penny and we know exactly where it's going, that seems a good idea because one thing all the parties agree on is the fact that the NHS is in a bit of a state and needs a lot of help, quite ignoring the recent cyber attacks. Mm. Um, Alan, Liberal Democrat figures show a big increase in membership. Yes. You know, there, there is Highest something ever. of a resurgence then. Um, just quickly, have, have you seen the effects in this region already? Yes. I, I, people are coming up to me in the street, are saying, are you the Liberal Democrat candidate around here? It happened to me yesterday, actually, um, in Rawdon. And I said, yes, I am. Whereabouts do you live? And he said, well, I live in Rawdon, and I'm so pleased you're standing. And he's a new member. Uh, and I'm not just making that up. I could even <laughs> tell you the chap's name. But uh, it's happening all the time. And um, as you say, we've got the highest membership ever now. Um, another interesting statistic for you is that a recent poll in the New European newspaper, uh, which is not a tabloid sensationalist organ by any means, they did an opinion poll and 36% of Labour voters who voted Remain mm -hmm. are this time going to vote for the Liberal Democrats. Right. I'm afraid Alan, that's all we have time for. Thank you very much, Alan. Alan. Thanks, Thanks for coming in. A drama company in Sherburn has rocked its way to its second birthday celebrations. Ali, Anna Riley went to join the festivities. After blowing out all the candles on their birthday cake, an award-winning drama company in Sherburn still have enough breath left for their energetic warm-up. Northern Star Acting have reached their second year milestone this month and are hoping for many more celebrations to come. The organisation specialises in training actors from the age of five and above to get into film and TV. They've even had a performance masterclass from a Hollywood actress. But as well as the highs over the years, there have also been lows. It's like, you know, I find it hard to believe sometimes that things have moved so quick, you know, and that things are doing so well because I've had so many obstacles and knockbacks and sometimes I've felt like things are never going to take off. And now it just seems to have exploded and it really is amazing. There is a real community spirit fostered by the club's director who thinks of the group as a tribe of actors. Northern Star Acting, it's not an acting class, it's a tribe of actors. We're all motivating and supporting each other as they make their way along into this crazy, adventurous <laughs> industry. And the thespians can only agree that they get support from the classes. Good days, bad days. There's always somebody there who you can post things on the Facebook page, message people, email, whatever. I enjoy the lessons and I enjoy the I enjoy my co I enjoy the co students that I come here with. They're really, they're really awesome people, really fun to hang out with. Sometimes I, I come here on a on a, an evening just to see everybody, really. A lot of the people, myself included, suffer with like depression, anxiety, things like that. So when you're having your bad days and you don't really want to talk to anyone, you know that there's people there that you can talk to. And just who can get involved in the rehearsals and filming? So we've got classes suitable for all ages, but we do audition for entry, just to make sure really that it's right for them and that it's the right time. And also that they've got a similar mindset to the rest of the tribe, that they've got a positive attitude and that they're willing to support and help each other and that they've got potential. The tribe are currently rehearsing for a short cult horror film called Cured, written and directed by one of its members, which should be completed and ready to hit the film festival circuit by the end of summer. But will it be another award winner? Watch this space. Anna Riley, reporting for Yorkshire Voice. We've been joined by our sports correspondent, Oliver Lyons, to round up the weekend's events. Ollie, how have our sports people been doing over the weekend? It could have been good, better for some, but it was good for some. It was a happy homecoming for Nicola Adams as she beat Mexican teenager Marion Salazar by stoppage on Saturday night in Leeds. The double Olympic champion had her 18-year-old opponent on the ropes in the third round, prompting the referee to stop the fight at the first direct arena. Meanwhile, Josh Warrington made it two Leeds wins from two on the night as he beat Spaniard Kiko Martinez on points to retain his WBC international flyweight title. 
But it wasn't a good weekend for Hull City as their relegation from the Premier League was confirmed following a 4-0 thrashing at Crystal Palace yesterday. Marco Silva's men had a whopping 70% of possession but failed to register a single shot on target as goals from Wilfred Zaha, Christian Benteke, Luka Milijevic and Patrick Van Alho sealed the Tigers' fate. And meanwhile in the Championship playoffs, Huddersfield Town missed a host of chances at home to Sheffield Wednesday in the first leg of their semi-final which finished 0-0 with Izzy Brown and Naki Wells going close to the Terriers. The return fixture will be played on Wednesday night. And Yorkshire qualified for the knockout stages of the Royal London One Day Cup despite losing by five wickets at Warwickshire yesterday. Joe Root scored 85 and Matthew Waite added 71 as the Vikings finished on a respectable 281 for 8. But Ian Bell's 98 and Jonathan Trott's 70 for the hosts guided the Bears to an easy victory. Yorkshire faced Leicestershire Foxes tomorrow, still in with a chance of winning the North Group, which would take them straight into the semi-finals. Thanks, Ollie. Thanks for that, Ollie. And uh, yeah, mixed fortunes for, for Yorkshire sportsmen this week. Yes, definitely. Spirits are high after the Leeds Half Marathon raised thousands of pounds for charities. Runners raced across the city yesterday, competing 13 gruelling miles in the hot sun, with friends and family rallying for them. Ellie Rigby went along to the event. Three, two, one. Raising money for charity gives a real purpose to running the Leeds Half Marathon. And with over 9,000 runners taking part, charities are celebrating as hundreds of thousands of pounds have been raised for good causes across Yorkshire and beyond. So how much have these charities collected? At the minute we've got 8,000 8, pounds, so hopefully we'll reach 10,000 if we really today. Uh, 55,000. Um, hopefully about 14, 15,000 pounds. Um, well, we'd hope to raise 10 to 15,000 pounds would be fantastic, but whatever our run is raised is just a massive, uh, massive help to the cause. So uh, yeah, every 20 pounds raises uh, an hour of nursing care. So, uh, so, yeah, so all the runners today, not just Mary Curie, but all the runners are doing a fantastic job. And how will the money impact some of the causes? Um, obviously it will help Macmillan um, to support more people affected by cancer with our various services like our support line um, and our Macmillan nurses and various different things. Um, so yeah, really, really helpful. The marathon is celebrating its 32nd anniversary and charities are so thankful of the money fundraised. <laughs> And thank you, done fantastically and just on behalf of the children at Martin House and their families, a huge, huge thank you. And we're in awe, we're in awe. We are, we, yeah, we are envious of what they're achieving today, it's fantastic what they're doing. Yeah. Ellie Rigby for Yorkshire Voice. Fantastic, thanks for that Ellie and uh, what a fantastic event down there, clearly thousands of people and mm. many more thousands made for charity. Yeah, certainly a lot of fun in the sun there. Absolutely, and you know, I'm, I'm, <laughs> don't think you and I are going to be running any half marathons soon. But oh you know, no, it, it really was, you know, to see so many people and fantastic amount of money raised. Um, you know, when at, at, as always, we love to hear from you here at Yorkshire Voice. You can get in touch uh, at Yorkshire V on uh, on Twitter or as ever, you can email us as well. Um, Sean, well, unfortunately, that's all we've got time for tonight. Uh, See you tomorrow at uh, 4 p.m. 4 p.m.